nigga Patrick Ewing. Okay, so now I want to talk breaking records and the politics behind it. Okay. I feel like the days of, you know, DJs breaking records are, are of no more in the sense that mm -hmm. we have radio DJs playing what they have to play. Mm -hmm. You have the club DJs playing what they're ordered to play. And it's just very few DJs that take chances on unsigned artists mm -hmm. and such. And I just feel like the DJ needs to, you know, take back their courage and start not only yeah. playing records but breaking records. Yeah, not being afraid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Do you take chances on unsigned artists? There's so much un unsigned artists that I've worked with that I helped. Even artists, you know, uh, that's... We all know to this day that I, you know, uh, have a lot to do with, you know, uh, their success, their success, and getting their music out. Um, you know, uh, in order to break a record, mm -hmm. you have to be a fan of music. Mm -hmm. You just can't, you know. In order for a DJ, or for my, I'll speak for myself. In order for uh, if you have a record and I like your record, you know, I'm gonna push it because yeah. I I like the record. I think it's something that, you know, can possibly, you know, make a lot of noise. Yes. And you have to be a fan of music. Simply. You just can't play a record just to play a record and expecting that it's going to take off. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be a fan of that person's music. That's the only way it's going to, you know, carry some wings on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know you approach all the time, I could imagine, with the you know, guys. I, I can't, you know... It's it's so much artists out there, you know. I can't so accommodate much. everybody. I can only do but so much. Definitely. So um, you know, when I do get uh, let's say a handful of artists, you know, I take my time and I listen to the records. Mm -hmm. I don't just listen to your record and throw it away, you know. I give mm -hmm. you my opinion. I don't like this record, but you know, give me a second record. Give me about three records to listen to. Mm -hmm. Just don't give me one. Let me mm -hmm. tell you what I think. I like that. That might fit for me. That I know I can work with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like you know sometimes some artists. You know, DJs need to, you know, speak up more and tell an artist, like, you know, instead of giving me that one record, give me three records, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let me give me my opinion. Let me see what I can work with other than that one record. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I get most it. Most DJs, they don't ask, you know, they won't just do so, you know. They want, you know, sometimes they take the money because everybody these days, you know, they're trying to throw money to get the, you know, records yeah. spended. And sometimes that's what it takes because it's frustrating, you know. Yeah. I could, I, that's why I wrote the question because I thought of, you know, unsigned artists and how frustrating it may be to get on, you know. Yeah, but like I said, uh, like you said earlier, uh, difficulty. One of the difficulties of getting the That's the grind, exactly. You have to stay consistent. Exactly, exactly. There's a new generation of G DJs, you know, being that you're, I don't know if you consider yourself a veteran yet, you know, you're still, you know, grinding, but you've yeah. been here for a while and you're uh -huh. experienced in it. So the newer generations of DJs under you, do you notice any, like, mistakes that you see they're making or do you think that the new generation is, you know, doing well? The new generation, to me, isn't doing that well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also a part of the new generation as well. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I came in, you know, uh, with the new generation and with the knowledge of the older generation. Yeah. So I've seen, and I've made my mistakes. I've seen what to do and what not to do. And with the new generation, you know, they're not doing the um, the background check. They're not doing, you know, following up on the history of records. You know, knowing that, you know, when you get on, you're not supposed to be, you know, playing uh, the top 40 songs. Hmm. At a certain time. Okay. You have to pace yourself. You know, okay. You, know, you can't burn yourself out. One thing what most DJs do, you know, sometimes they play about the same record two to three times out of the night. Hmm. And it no, takes no. Away, you know, you should be able to play a record one time and one time only. One time, one time only. Exactly. Play a record a second time. It, it's like energy I, isn't the same. And that happened before. I'm like this DJ. You, exactly. They don't understand. DJs control how your night's gonna go. We control it. We control how you much liquor you want to drink. Yes, you control, you control how, everything. How much money you want to spend. You yes. control everything. So it, it's just I just feel with today's DJ, just gotta do more research. Do more homework. Do more homework and study the craft. Understanding the craft. Just don't think you're gonna get on and spin a record. Learn how to scratch. Learn how to make. Learn how to, you know, transition records. Mm -hmm. you know, don't jump all over the place. Mm -hmm. Learn yes. the genres of music. It doesn't have to be hip hop. It could be pop. It could be country. It could exactly. Be whatever, it could be you know, jazz. You never know when you're going to get called to, you know. And then when you're doing your, your, your history, you know, you actually might pick up another genre or you might, 
you know. Fall into liking. Fall, yeah, fall into liking. Music is really universal, so, yeah. you know, somebody who's just stuck on rap could end up loving jazz. Mm -hmm. Now, the Wendy Williams show. Yeah. How long have you been on the Wendy Williams show? Um... I'd say maybe like four or five years now. Four or five Almost years. Yeah, about four years. Yeah. And I heard you say that, you know, you and Wendy's relationship goes way back before, I don't know if you said before the success, but you knew her for a while. Yeah, I, I've always knew, known who Wendy was. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, of course. I always but, knew who it was, but uh, our relationship picked up, you know, uh, once we started working together. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how did that come about, you and Wendy Williams? You know, I um, happened to be in a club, mm -hmm. DJing, and... Um, her husband happened to be in a club one day. You okay. Know, you know, one thing, uh, you know, they used to throw parties and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. um, he happened to be in a club one day and um, he heard me and just, yo, heard you was a sick DJ, man. Mm -hmm. He liked me, called me up, went down there, mm -hmm. you know, was nervous. <laughs> you know, it's different from what I used to doing. And yeah. Um, we worked it out. Uh, he, liked, he liked everything about me, liked the way I sound. And we worked it out and they became my home. Wow. And they became my extended family. Wow, that is amazing. And um, when I was thinking, like, right, so he DJs at the Wendy Williams show. Is, is it when you, it goes to commercial, when it really gets live in there? Yeah, and sometimes, That's even, when. And sometimes even on air as well. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you play. On air and off air, yeah. Mm hmm she, she always gives you a nice mm -hmm. you know you that, shout out that's that's that how did, did you feel like that like elevated your career how did that like elevate every, your every experience i went through elevated my career i mean wendy you know wendy is is you know not only a friend she's a sister she's a mom she's mm -hmm. everything to me and oh wow know, she, she um embraced me took me in not only as you know a person that works with her and works mm -hmm. for her and and um you know she she gave me a lot of knowledge on the game mm -hmm. I mean, come yeah, on, she's yeah. Wendy Williams. I can yeah. only imagine how she much you learned me, from her. I learned a lot, you know, and, and um, she taught me a lot, you know, mm -hmm. to expand, you know, uh, the way I think when it comes to people and music mm -hmm. and how to do business properly. Mm. Valuable lessons. Yes, yeah, value all the time. Valuable life, life lessons. And also, you're, um, you know, fabulous and Nicki Minaj is so DJ. How did you, you know, become the same question, but for Nicki Minaj? How did that come about? Um, Nicki, uh, we go back. We Way go, back from? Yeah, we, we go back because uh, we started the same. I mean, we started from doing uh, talent shows. Mm. And we had a lot of mutual friends. Mm. And, you know, um, you know, um, when she would go to uh, rap showcases, I was there. DJing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we cross, you know, we always bumped into each other all the time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I got some of her records, you know, I was breaking her records, yes. you know, when nobody was, nobody was, you know, uh -huh. the itty bitty piggies, like the nobody, back in yeah, the, the so underground, I always, Nick, I was always pushing her mm -hmm. underground, mm -hmm. and then we crossed paths at Wendy. At Wendy? Yeah, we crossed paths again at, back at Wendy. Wow. When first started, yeah. <laughs> wow. So what a, when I bumped into her. That's a great place I to bump into her. her. She bumped into me. It's like, wow. Wow, like, look what wow, we look, did. Look, look, <laughs> we started from look where we got. Mm -hmm. And from there, it was, you know, magic. And it, it's Fab a similar story? You know, that, that's me Brooklyn. And Fab, we go back. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, exactly. Brooklyn, you know, it's small. We, you know, it's mm -hmm. big, but it's also small. Mm -hmm. You know, so. We, we, you know, we, we're from the same hood, you mm -hmm. know, we know the same Oh, so, people. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I'm a fan of his music. He's a fan of, you know, what I do. He's mm -hmm. seen what I was doing, and, you know, we both reached out. We reached out to each other, and we made it happen. He made it happen. We made it happen. And you travel. You, you, you go on tour with him. I could only imagine how much fun you guys had, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, fun. Yeah, it's always fun. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got to make it fun, you yeah, know? Yeah, have to. You know, one of the last questions I have, it's been, like, a great month in hip-hop, I feel. Yeah. I feel like, well, you know, the last time we had like a real beef that excited the fans was like a while. I can't even remember the last time. So, you know, the Drake and the Meek Mill beef. Okay. Now, the other day I was listening to the radio and I noticed that they added back to back. Mm -hmm. It's in rotation now. Yeah. So that made me, I said, wait, they have back, like this is a, me and my videographer was in the car like, <laughs> this is the song. So do you play back to back when you're DJing at, at, at clubs? And I mean, you know. One thing about DJs, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it puts you in a very difficult, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it, in a situation. But uh, music speaks for itself, you know. And yeah. sometimes you got to take yourself out of the box, and you have to be able to, um, you know, 
to satisfy everybody. Yeah, because exactly. It's not about, you know, the person, you know, exactly. Job is to have everybody dancing. So mm -hmm. this is the record that everybody's listening to and everybody's playing, and you have to respect. You have no choice but to. Yeah, but you know, but you do it, and and you try your best to to operate that type of situation in a respectful way. Exactly. You stay out of yeah. it. Be neutral, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the best way to play it. And another reason why I feel like this was a great month for hip hop because in, cause, um, Straight Outta Compton, yeah. the movie, did great you see movie. it? I'm I sure you saw it. It was amazing. It was a great movie. Great movie. Yeah, I would I give it. Everybody to see that movie. Definitely. Though. And I love the numbers. I mean, 67 million in one. Look what we could do. I mean, yeah. that was just amazing. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that movie uh, has a lot, you know, you know, it has a lot to do with history, you know? <laughs> Strictly, like it's a history. When I seen it, because you know I'm 24, so when I watched it, you know, of course I know about NWA. Yeah, I'm a music journalist, but to watch it, and you actually, it makes you actually want to go back. I went home and I was watching Easy yeah. interviews, <laughs> Easy yeah. songs, and it's just, it was just amazing yeah. to came to a see long that. Way from that era. Whoever would have thought hip hop would make it this far? Yeah, I right. mean, That's it, a line. yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh my gosh, Boof, it was such a great conversation talking I was to you. Great talking. I could be here forever. <laughs> yes, I wish you guys. You're busy though. You gotta go, hey. but there'll be other times. So tell them. So you have a lot going on. We're yes. gonna look out for the DJ Boof experience. Yes. We're gonna look out for your album yes. and tell us what else. Um, Where to find you? You can find me on Instagram at okay. DJB O F. You can mm -hmm. find me on Twitter. You can find me on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I think I do have a Snapchat. You do? Are you, are you a pro I'm, or are you? I'm not a pro. I'm not a pro at it. You gotta. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to work it out. Um, you know, got my website imdjmove.com. Mm -hmm. You can look out. Uh, you know, obviously you see the heart hat. You know, uh, a lot of collaborations I've been mm -hmm. doing. You know, um. So you've been. Um, so you've been um, collaborating with like clothing designers yeah, and such. That's, yeah, it's one of my collaboration hats. Uh, I like that. Designed with hot clothing, yeah. Okay, oh, that's nice. So I'm into the fashion as well, too. Yes, yeah, sure. My hands is in everything. Okay, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> what they say, millionaires have seven different incomes. You gotta do it. <laughs> you have to. Definitely. Yo, 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 you know what time it is. It's your boy DJ Booth, a.k.a. The Shutdown, a.k.a. The Voice of Brooklyn, a.k.a. The Heartbeat to the Streets, a.k.a. The Pulse of the City. And you now tuned in with Strictly Hip Hop, man. I shake the screen on you every time. Patrick Ewing, yeah we got it cheap, nigga Patrick Ewing.